This is Matt from NoCodeTrainer.com. I hope you liked this video and you can take what you learned from it and incorporate it into your own bubble application. If you do, please make sure to click like and leave a comment in the comment section with how you'll use it inside of your application. If you'd like to be kept up to date with more tips and tricks you can use in your bubble app, please subscribe to our channel and be sure to check out NoCodeTrainer.com for more exclusive content. In this video, we're going to show you how you can make it so that as a user hovers over an image element, the image element will zoom in just like so. So let's take a look at the editor and see how we set this up. Inside of my editor, I have an HTML element. This HTML element is holding on to the custom CSS that I'm needing to be able to make this all work. Now to ensure that you'll be able to do this too, you need to have your application set up properly. One of those settings that you'll need to make sure you have inside of your own app is to actually check this box to expose the option to add ID attribute to HTML elements. Make sure that's checked there. Then also you will need a plugin called Classify. It's a free plugin. What it does is it allows you to add or remove classes to different elements and use those classes to target those elements within your custom CSS. So what I've done after I have my application set up properly to do so, I created a group. On that group, I added this class and I labeled it as try wrapper. And then I also inside of that image element, or sorry, inside of that group element, I added an image element. And my image element is holding on to an image. And then I added the ID attribute of add class and I labeled that as try. So what's happening inside of this custom CSS that we're doing here, you can see that we have dot try, which is representing our image element, and the transition is 0 0.3 seconds. So what that is doing is it's giving us a timing for which it takes from the moment someone hovers over it to the time that it is actually zoomed in, you know, what is that transition? So you can play around with this. You can actually, you know, change the duration of the transition to maybe match a sort of look and feel that you're wanting within your own application. Then we have the try wrapper and this try wrapper, you want to make sure that your settings here with the display and the overflow are exactly as they are there. My height and my width are in this instance, actually the same height and width that I have set onto the group element itself, that group element which has the class of try wrapper. So what's happening within this area here, of the height and the width, is I'm setting it to 180px because I don't want my group to expand its size at all. I want that group to remain fixed at the settings I've placed onto it so as to restrict the image element that is inside of it to give us this sort of zoom in effect. Because otherwise, without this sort of fixed and con constricting group element around the image, the image will just increase its size. And so it will sort of enlarge. And we have a video about image enlarge on hover uh, and so we are using some similar types of css here but this is really just to restrict that container group so that you get this zoom in effect you can change these settings in, in terms of the number value what you want to make sure though is you have this declaration of important there uh, at the end of it to make sure that bubble will not override it and that it will stay as you set it in here. More than likely, what you'll want to be doing is making it so that the height and width match inside of this HTML with the height and width that you actually set onto your group element itself. And then what we have underneath here is try hover, dot try and hover. What this CSS is doing is actually allowing us to tell the um, styling guide how we want the image, and that image is the dot try as the ID attribute, how we want that image to behave when it is hovered. And the transform scale, and then this number value of 1.5, which is used throughout these different sections down here, 1.5, you can play around with that. That's the sort of number that's giving us the amount of zoom that will actually take effect.
And the reason why we have multiple versions down here is because different web browsers will actually allow or maybe support different types of CSS and others don't. And so what we're doing here is making sure that, you know, Internet Explorer 9 and above and Firefox, Safari and Opera will all actually have this CSS work properly within them. Uh, so you'll want to have that to make sure that across all different browsers, this is going to work within your application. So that's how you get the zoom in on Hover. Okay, and I hope that this is helpful for you and you'll find a way to implement this inside of your own bubble application. Thanks for watching the video. Hope that you found this helpful. If you'd like to be able to get editor access, please make sure that you check out the site, nocodetrainer.com. The link is in the description to the video where you'll be able to gain access into the editor and be able to check out how things were set up within the application itself.